Wonka is the latest in a long line of unwanted Hollywood remakes. Well before it came out, the film split audiences for a ton of different reasons. There's the dubious casting of Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka for one, but also the fact that the movie is so unconnected to the original, making it just seem like another Hollywood cash grab. But even if you enjoy it, the motive behind the movie is still kind of wrong. In fact, it's the very thing that the original tried to warn us about. And to understand why this remake is so creatively bankrupt, we need to understand what made the original work. And in two words, it would be Gene Wilder. But obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that. His portrayal of Willy Wonka is one of the greatest pieces of acting of all time. First, the film spends nearly half of its runtime building up to his reveal. And when he finally comes out of the doors, Wilder sets the tone with one simple move. He starts out limping, then just as he reaches the lock gate, he stumbles, then turns it into a somersault. Wilder made the small detail one of his his essential conditions for taking the role, and his reasoning shows us why. It tells the audience that he can never really be trusted. Anything he says or does in all of his lines could be truth or complete fiction. Introducing the central ambiguity in the character that never fades away. Later, Wilder adds to this with his razor sharp sarcasm. You truly get the sense that he cares about the experience and childhood wonder deeply, but at the same time, he seems completely callous and indifferent to the things that happen to other kids. He jokes about Augustus nearly drowning and getting stuck in the pipe. The suspense is terrible. He He's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. Here, 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 there's a thousand little details you could point out to illustrate how great this performance is from the boat scene alone, but it all comes together in a complex, self-contradictory, brilliant package. When you take a performance that's as electric as lightning, it's hard to see how it could strike twice, but this is the task that Timothy Chalamet was given. Even from the trailer alone, you can tell there's tons of aspects of the character missing. There's none of the sense of malice or danger that you get from Gene Wilder. Instead, it seems like the eccentricity and the whimsical parts of his character are all there really is. Then there's the question of whether Timothy Chalamet can even live up to this. The standards are so high, and it seems like he really failed her. I mean, he didn't even need to audition for the role either, getting it solely on name recognition and reputation alone, which explains why he just doesn't come across in the right way in the movie. Whether he's the right choice on this basis is still a matter of debate, but the problem is with framing a prequel around Willy Wonka in the first place. A lot of what made him so impactful was that we truly never knew anything about his past or where he came from. It's a trap that the Tim Burton and Johnny Depp remake fell into as well. Along with Depp's creepy and cold performance, the scenes of him as a child just muddy the water. The whole point of Willy Wonka is the mystery behind him. He's just as insane and unpredictable as his factory is. In the original, they're almost the same thing, two sides of the same coin. Humanizing him and explaining his origins could tamper with all of this. Ultimately though, an actor is always limited by the script they're given. However well he plays the role, it'll always be constrained by how one note they make this character. It's pretty unlikely they'll be able to recapture the magic anyway. You'd question why studios make such unoriginal nonsense when they have hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal. People would say that you should blame the audience, who are constantly buying the tickets over and over again. But that's been changing for a while now. Even though so many modern movies are just sequels or remakes, it won't last forever. People are just getting sick and tired of it. You don't need more evidence than the biggest cinema event of the year, Barbenheimer. Both films were pretty much completely original, besides the fact that Barbie was obviously already a toy brand. The scale of the events and the passion that people had for them proves that people still want good original movies that actually have some substance behind them. How long will it take for the studios to wake up to this? Probably a long time. They'll have to be dragged kicking and screaming towards originality and creativity because it's hard and risky. Their bottom lines will have to fall so low that they won't have a choice. Each movie like Wonka they release is yet another test to see if they can still make this repackaging formula work. Every time there's backlash and it doesn't pan out as they hoped, it's another victory for the majority of people who want something new. When you look at the way both this film and the original are being made, it's not looking good. The first movie was on a tiny budget for how successful and famous it eventually became. I mean, the people behind it only had $2 million to work with, but despite that the film had a ton of insane sets and crucial details going on in the background. And it was these constraints that led to the creativity that made the film a classic. They had to improvise and come up with new ideas, they had no choice. I mean, you've already seen a version of the film that doesn't have those limits, and it just didn't really make you feel the same way. A large part of what was missing from the 2005 version was because of this. It had the visual appeal and beautiful sets, but it had over 15 times the budget once you account for inflation. That's along with all the technological progression that comes with it. But what really took away from that was that there wasn't any contrast. In the original, you go from the streets of 70s Germany where they filmed it, to the incredible factory. But in the 2005 version, the world is already weird and absurd even before you get there, taking away from that transition. And that's why the new prequel just seems like a mistake. First, there isn't really a factory to begin with. Then if the world is already whimsical from the beginning, then there's no sense that you're actually stepping into a whole new world. Johnny Depp's portrayal of Willy Wonka is lacking as well. While lots of the changes are just making the film similar to the book, he still comes off as awkward and creepy. It's like they just took one part of Wilder's portrayal and maximized it. 
turning that into his only character trait. On top of that, lots of the other characters are barely any substance either. People rightfully made jokes about Grandpa Joe from the original. There's tons of moments where he's selfish or misleads Charlie, like when he convinces him to drink the floating bubble drink. Even in the final scene, his response to Charlie winning is to ask what he's going to get out of it. Then there's the fact that he spent 20 years mooching off of Charlie's mum and lying in bed, then starts dancing once he learns about the ticket. But even with all of this, at least he had a personality. He represented the kind of adult cynicism, as shown with a suggestion to just sell the everlasting gobstopper to Slugworth. In the 2005 remake, he doesn't even have a personality at all contributing nothing to the plot or the story. It's a shame he didn't have at least something going on. Of course, it's not an awful film. In fact, it seems much better than the new one. And even if Depp's Wonka isn't for most people, at least it's an original take on the character. The film is much closer to the book compared to the 1971 version. In fact, it's more like an adaption of the book itself rather than a remake of the previous film. There's clearly an artistic motivation behind it, even if it feels off. You can tell even before watching the movie that there won't be a real message or anything unique being said at all. The way they've clearly distilled and reduced Willy Walker's character down to this eccentric genius archetype that's the entire theme throughout the movie. Setting up the chocolate cartel as the villains is just a cheap cop-out. It means that it's just a bland cartoonishly evil corporation that wants to stop magic and keep making money. The little girl's character will be an empty vessel for Wonka to amaze and nurture, and it's all formulaic to make sure that it translates for international markets and for the lowest common denominators. Beyond that, it's pretty unlikely that it will acknowledge the irony of one of the big studios making a movie about originality destroying an economic monopoly. It doesn't set up Willy Wonka's future character traits at all. There is no psychopathic figure from the book here. This is just so that they can keep setting up sequels if it does well enough, milking it in the most bland way possible. And in the scene where Wonka gives hover chocolates to some of the chocolate cartel in front of an onlooking crowd, they eat them, tell him it's rubbish, and then they start flying. One of them shouts, who in their right mind wants a chocolate that makes you fly? Who in their right mind wants a chocolate that makes you fly? But obviously everyone does and they try one as well. As a scene, it gets to the heart of why this movie just doesn't really work. Obviously nobody in their right mind wouldn't want to try it, and having the main villain think differently shows they're only there to act as a counterbalance to Willy Wonka's whimsy. Having these ridiculous, nonsensical villains and characters is just really lazy. And it means the entire movie just has a clear answer from the beginning, and there really isn't any nuance at all. The original has barely even had villains. If anything, Wonka and the factory played that part. They were the ones sucking the kids into tubes and making fun of their downfall, even if it was completely deserved. This is why, even with all its flaws, the 2005 version is so much better than the modern prequel. Even the concept of the prequel is just all wrong. Centering the entire film on Willy Wonka alone just takes away the magic. His mysterious background and origins are gone. Instead trying to add nuance and depth to the character, he's become a completely sweet, whimsical shadow of Wilder and Depp's betrayals. Without the threat and the danger, one of the most interesting and complex characters in children's fiction becomes something entirely mundane once again yet another cash cow icon. And it's a choice that mirrors the entire concept of the movie, taking the parts of the story in the film that fit into the modern Hollywood mold and cashing in. It doesn't matter that it's just stealing ideas from the previous generations, but it's even worse when you consider the story that they're stealing from. The whole point of Willy Wonka's factory are the original ideas and the creativity. Making a cookie cutter prequel titled after the main character's last name is a complete reversal. It's like Warner Bros saw Slugworth and decided to follow his example instead. In the original movie, there's this constant tension within the message, we're shown all these spoiled kids made rotten by always getting what they want. Then Charlie is the only good one who struggled for everything he's ever had. Charlie's mum tries to bring him down to earth, telling him that he probably won't ever win the ticket and that good things will happen eventually when he least expects it. But then the last lines of the film are about how the good boy who got everything he wanted lived happily ever after. It seems to contradict the people we've seen who did have everything they wanted and how awful they truly are. On top of that, the whole factory is like a consumerist industrial fever dream. Free labour from the Oompa Loompas is used to create temporary pleasure and escape from the masses. The richest man in the entire city is the one exploiting the people's depression, using their instant gratification to create ever more greed. That's why Charlie's only joys in life are the chocolate bars and the dream of moving up. And there's a good chance this is all just another of Wonka's tricks. The whimsical factory isn't fake, it's confirmed by his office in the original film. Despite not being for the public or even being part of the tour, everything has been divided in half for no reason. But the idea that this means Charlie will live happily forever just doesn't really fit. There are some indications that Wonka isn't just a greedy baron. He did make the everlasting gobstopper, saying that it will let even the poorest children always have something sweet. But we never see him selling them, and he insists that the recipe is kept secret so that nobody else can make them. It even extends outside of the film itself. The original was only made to promote a new candy bar being released by Quaker Oats. Of course, it doesn't detract from the movie. The Wonka bars that they did make barely sold at all, 
and the marketing stunt behind the production was a complete failure, but the art they made to go along with it far outlasted the product. It's like Warner Bros completely missed the subtext with this prequel. Instead of being made to promote a product, the new version is the product. It's going to be as sweet and temporary as a chocolate bar. The only intention behind it is money. The studios see these timeless stories as easy prey, just like the Snow White disaster, and that means the marketing can be vague, as everybody already knows the property, and it's much easier to get the idea past a boardroom rather than going to the trouble and risk of making something entirely new. Then you'd have to explain the story and the ideas behind it. It's the reason why so many of these films come out. Despite the fact that barely anybody wants to see them anymore. And remakes and retelling can work, but you need a fresh perspective as well to respect the source material. Ignoring all of this and adding in a watered down Willy Wonka and a ton of template characters isn't new. Every time studios do this, they erode the audience's interest in these sorts of films just a little bit more. And sooner or later, they won't be able to get away with it anymore then maybe we'll see more than a couple of original blockbusters every year. There's a reason behind why studios have done this, shifting so many resources to just rehashing the same ideas over and over again. As the industry has progressed over the past decade or so, we've seen medium budget films dry up. Big studios just don't seem to make them anymore. Streaming is part of the reason for this. When there's so much content at your fingertips, there isn't a reason to go to the cinema anymore unless it's some big event. If you wanted to make a medium budget film today, it would have to go on Netflix or one of the other streaming platforms. And even then, it's pretty unlikely it will ever make a profit. Those films still exist of course, but they're in decline. You'll generally get much further pitching a TV show in that case anyway. And that leaves two options for films today, either small independent films on a very low to non-existent budget or the massive $150 million minimum films that we're seeing today in the truckload from big studios. With Warner Bros investing so much money and time into these films, they're going to take the safe option every single time. Only a few directors like Nolan or Scorsese have the recognition to get past this filter and actually do something unique. And Scorsese still had to turn to Netflix to meet The Irishman. It's awful for films in general. The first and most obvious result is that it leads to films like Wonka, which are taking pretty much no risks whatsoever. Along with the unoriginality, you barely get any new actors being able to get into films. Without mid-budget films being a stepping stone to the big leagues, you just see the same actors over and over again. They're always the safest option, as Warner Bros knows that thousands of people will go to see Wonka just for Timothy Chalamet or Hugh Grant. Why risk giving someone who isn't a household name a shot? There's too much money on the line for that. Out of the top 20 highest grossing movies worldwide for 2023, only three weren't based some pre-existing properties. One was Oppenheimer, a Nolan project so he could get away with it, another is Elemental, another Pixar film that's incredibly similar to their previous ones, and the third was Sound of Freedom, which is at the bottom of the list. The tides might be changing, but it would take a lot more box office flops before we see any real progress. The worldwide market is another problem here. With so many billions that these studios now want to sell their films to, it makes it that much more likely they'll go for the broadest appeal possible. Plots that are too complicated or layered can't actually be considered because they might not translate into another language or culture. It's why action heavy movies are everywhere at the top, because a big CGI fight doesn't need any context. And the Wonka movie is just another way to explore this tired formula. If all the magic is expressed through CGI set pieces, then it will play well whether you understand the point of it or not. And if that's the main focus, then what's the point in having a point at all? So if it isn't clear already, there's no point in seeing Wonka. Every ticket that people buy just confirms the big studio's plans to keep releasing the same movies over and over again. It delays the process of something new coming out of the deadlock we're seeing right now. And despite all the pressures working against them, the mid-budget movies that do come out have been performing well. Godzilla Minus One is a great example. With just $15 million, Toho made a far better movie than anything that's come out of Disney recently. It's like a vision of what they should have done with Wonka. Instead of just ignoring what made the original films it's based on great, they built on it. It isn't based solely on the visuals or the fights, although they are amazing considering its budget. What sets this movie apart is its soul, and the social commentary they've injected into it. Godzilla isn't the hero like some more recent movies, he's a living embodiment of destruction and terror. That was what gave the original power, the allegory behind behind it and the dread it inspired. Instead, modern Hollywood remakes take the surface level of whatever they're stealing and forget everything else. It's why they just can't compare.